Hi there, and welcome back to another edition of Bernama Today. You are with Sonia Aisha and the very beautiful Jesse Chahal with you on a Tuesday, 18th of June, 2019. Wonderful. That's right. Thanks for joining us. Right back at you, Sonia. Thank you so much for joining us on today's show. Of course, as things would have it, uh, we are coordinated. That's right. And by chance. And we <laughs> hope that uh, that remains a theme for today where everything sort of flows into, you know, a, a nice sequence know, exactly. for all of us. Here in the studio and all for you out there as well as we know every day poses different kinds of challenges and of course here we bring you the latest headlines and stories making its rounds locally and internationally that's as right well. and for the viewers out there uh, just to share with you you can also check us out on YouTube uh, we are also on Facebook live uh, Unify TV that's channel 631 and 121 on my TV alternatively you can just go on to Bernama.com and catch us live there there you go Sonia what a champ she's <laughs> got the flow and uh, that's right it's great to be here in the studio with you of course are you a fan of durian i love durian oh. i'm a truly big fan of durian and me too and as we all know it is the durian season oh, that's right it is back with a vengeance in fact uh farmer however has it under control mm -hmm. uh, they say that of course uh, they will be uh, keeping their eye on what's happening here uh, malaysia of course used to be a durian dumping ground but now we are just sort of a haven for export that's and right of course we have enough here for all of us to feast there are now durian centers you drive past you can just that's eat right. all you can sit down there for an exactly hour or two. Assess, especially in ss2 in pataling jaya yes, that's you know? right but of <laughs> course of durians. as with everything moderation over indulgence with durian is going to give you some sort of you know stomach ache yeah. or issues. issues. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, uh, today is also the Autistic Pride Day um, that's being celebrated uh, throughout the entire world. Um, as we all know, it is uh, celebrated in the day of June and represents diversity and infinite possibilities. It is a day to promote awareness, acceptance and autonomy. Uh, the Autistic Pride Day are people living with the autism disease speak for themselves and celebrate in a unique way that autism affects each of them. That's right. So, of course, 18th of June is the day celebrated and observed uh, worldwide. Mm -hmm. And I think it's so important. One of the key words you mentioned is acceptance. And a lot of times for families who are going through this uh, mm -hmm. and their support system, it's not easy. That's uh, right. And, you know, it is also not easy for others to understand what they're going through. That's right. And I think the concerning uh, thing for us right now is that we see uh, the autism trend is on the rise and of course uh, social media is a good presence because a lot of the awareness now are um, being shared uh, to the public out there on the issues um, that arise with autism and families that needs to deal with kids who are autistic absolutely so it's mm. not to say a bad thing or an unfortunate thing we're not mm. uh, looking at it in that light all we're saying is that it poses its own challenges and That's the more right. acceptance we have from all different sectors whether in the medical sector you know from uh, the school uh, from the the adults or from parents That's right. uh, from peers it just makes it easier for everyone to have fair share buy-in uh, of course pride uh, to to celebrate autism with the pride that comes with it That's and right. of course uh, to a lot be for positive change all that around. In Malaysia, we've got 30,000 uh, autistic, autistic uh, uh, re recorded autistic children okay. um, as of 2017, so that number is probably even more now. That's right. And uh, moving on, we also have the Raja Pumaisuri Agong appointed as the IIUM Chancellor. Uh, Pumaisuri Agong Tunku Aziza Amina Maimuna Iskandaria yesterday received her credentials as the new constitutional head of the International Islamic University in Malaysia at Istana Negara. That's right. So more women in high-powered places. Tunku Aziza, who is the first woman to be appointed to this post received the credentials from Education Minister Dr. Masli Malik as we see here on screen. The appointment term is for five years effective April 12th and here's a quick fact if you don't really know uh, Tunku Aziza's official robe as the constitutional head was made using the Royal Pahang weaving. Wow and you know I think it's very refreshing to see uh, more women making it out there for example we also have Vivi Yusuf who was appointed as the board of directors for UITM. Absolutely. So so yes, yes. Oh, go women, go <laughs> women, and taking things to you know greater heights, and also bringing with it a flavor of whether it's you know a touch of being more nurturing, That's a right. touch of fashion, you just That's to right. spice it up and live it up a bit more. I think women can bring that uh, to the table uh, as right. well. That's right, and we also have um, <coughs> another news, which is Post Malaysia launches a sour fruit stamp series. Um, it will be releasing a new series of stamps called the Sour Fruit Stamp series, featuring three variants of the Assam plant. 
plant and fruit, namely the Asam Kalubi, Asam Embang, and Asam Kandis. Okay, have you ever been a stamp collector? Has that been one of your hobbies ever? I have not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I tried, I attempted, I got bored quite quickly. But nonetheless, uh, stamp coll uh, collecting is a huge hobby for a lot of people. Yeah, and right. here, Post Malaysia is in fact bringing out this uh, latest collection, something truly unique uh, to our land, Asam plant and fruit, three different variations. And of course, um, this series would highlight the use and diversity of Assam and how mm -hmm. the plant grows and spreads in its natural environment. That's right, and surprisingly, they only have 600 pieces of these stamps, uh, 200 pieces available for each of these designs. So for those of you who are a big fan of collecting stamps, be sure to head out there and collect those stamps uh, before they run out of it. And you know what, here's another quick fact, we've got many mm -hmm. of that today. Uh, these are some plants, we yes. put them in our food, we even use them to, uh, as herbs or to help, uh, help us recover as medicine, and a lot of times we don't even know uh, what these uh, plants look like. So Asam Kalubi, Asam Ambang, and Asam Kandi there you go. That's right. And speaking of food, we also have uh, the food delivery via drones in Cyberjaya by end of this month. I think this is so interesting and exciting because I know America has introduced um, the delivery of items uh, from the drones. That's right. And Cyberjaya residents now will be able to enjoy food delivery service right at their doorstep with the help of drones by the end of the month. It would take 12 minutes for the food to be delivered once an order is placed, uh, said Hamdi Hamdan. You know, we have the drones. We also have uh, grab food. You yeah. know, all you know, you don't even have to leave your house anymore. Absolutely, <laughs> things are changing quickly and swiftly and effectively as well. But here's the thing once again, you know, although we have this technology, we should not forget that going out to get that fresh air, going out for a walk, That's right. uh, the touch and feel still needs to be there. Nonetheless, I think a big strides here as uh, we take te technology and bring it uh, about our daily lives. Now, the food can be delivered over a radius of two kilometers. Mm -hmm. So if you're nearby, you know, a, a particular garai or That's a stall right. and you're just like, oh, I don't want to go down here yes. drone, does it come up to your level does it come up to your flow um, I'm not sure but uh, we have more we can probably discuss this later on we do have to take a quick okay. break but we will be right back after this so stay tuned, stay tuned. Hai, saya Hena Yo, Timbalan Menteri Pembangunan Wanita, Keluarga dan Masyarakat. Saya ingin mengucapkan selamat menyambut Hari Raya Aidilfitri kepada semua warga kerja dan penonton bernama News Channel. Dari hati ke hati, ku tujukan kata. Saya Misha Omar menyusun 10 jari mohon maaf zahir batin dan ingin mengucapkan selamat hari raya Adil Fitri kepada anda, warga kerja dan penonton-penonton bernama News Channel. Thanks for joining us right here on Bernama Today. Welcome back. If you've been tuning in, we come to you every day from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Monday to Thursdays. And of course, uh, you, uh, you can catch us, uh, post our show as well on our Facebook and YouTube channels. We've been talking about all things uh, good as we kicked off the show earlier today. We've That's got right. special collection uh, stamps. It's been released by Post Malaysia. We've That's also right. talked about how a test run for drones is happening in Cyberjaya. But now we move on to something slightly a little bit more on a serious note. Serious right? note, and that is, I think, something that's been on our lips for a long time. As Malaysians, we wonder about the economy, where mm -hmm. it's going, uh, about our cost of living. And here, one of uh, Malaysia's renowned um, economists has come out to say that we need to brace for tougher times ahead. This coming from uh, Dr. Jomo Sundaram. That's right, Dr. Jomo Sundan Sundaram, uh, who is the senior advisor at Kazana Research Institute, said. Many of these problems are beyond the control of the Malaysian government 
and we the people need to prepare ourselves for hard times ahead. Uh, the trade war does contribute in a big way, uh, but he also points out to uh, JVs and the news of Proton and Geely as an example of intricacies that we have to deal with. That's right. So what he's saying is, look, you know, this is a real problem, not just here in Malaysia, but worldwide mm -hmm. as well. And That's we right. really need uh, to understand what's going on. We need to prepare for these times. He said it's important for the entire nation to recognize these problems and deal with it together as a country. And of course, at this point of time, forget about political differences and let's unite as a nation. Of mm -hmm. course, he uh, said that um, uh, he had a few salient points to make and these are his uh, takeaways. He said the country should, should start thinking about domestic investments instead of just focusing its efforts on foreign investment uh, as its uh, economic savior. So of course, um, you know, he's he's been a well-known uh, economist right. for a long time, a lot of experience um, uh, around around him as well and he's saying you know let's dumb down the economics mm -hmm. let's get straight to some uh, points that can really help that's right um, also another topic on economy we're also talking about dr. M's uh, Tun, Ma Tun Dr. Mahathir International's community's assumption on Malaysia's palm oil I think this is a very interesting topic um, because a lot of these assumptions are uh, you know they say are uh, faulty because the, the the sorry he described the international community's assessment and assumptions about Malaysia's palm oil mm -hmm. as not fair and claiming that palm oil cultivation activities in the country affected its natural ec ecosystem as not true that's right so Dun Mahathir once again has come to the defense of palm oil he slammed these comments saying them uh, and calling them out to be unfair he says palm oil is the cheapest edible vegetable oil that's it is right. also easy to cultivate and once planted the yield can be enjoyed for up to 25 years and he stresses unlike uh, other oils such as soybean or rapeseed. Now he says, you talk about environment, clearing the forest. It, uh, look at Britain, for example. Where's mm -hmm. Sherwood Forest? That's um, right. <laughs> well, um, yes, is Robin Hood still in there somewhere? Sherwood Forest. Of course, here on screen, we see Thun M uh, in the UK. Mm -hmm. That's right. You know, I think a lot of people think uh, deforestation uh, is one of the main um, outcomes of the palm oil uh, plantation. But uh, sometimes people do use the emotional orangutan issue as well, yes. which I think is very unfair um, because and this needs to be addressed. Um, recent studies by the Union of Concerned uh, Scientists also showed that the main deforestation in the world is actually the beef industry. Mm -hmm. And that's about 71% of the global 5 billion hectare um, land that's being occupied by the cattle industry. Street. Right. While I agree on you, I think okay. Malaysia really needs to up our game uh, if we want to get into palm oil more seriously or more aggressively as we have already. Mm -hmm. uh, we really need to look at uh, our environment. For a long time, we have not adhered by the law, That's by right. the rules. It is true. Our wildlife, the orangutans, have suffered gravely. Elephants, tigers, they've all suffered gravely. They have been mm -hmm. not just uh, you know, poached within that area because mm -hmm. they have nowhere else to go, mm -hmm. but they have not been treated That's well right. and they have not been given any designated place to go either. That's right. I agree with you. Those are very interesting points that you have there. Um, also, talking about Malaysia, we are the top 10 wellness tourism markets in Asia. Funny how that balances <laughs> out, but yes, there's some good news for our travel uh, industry. According to Mata's president, Dato Tan Kok Leong, he says he projects a growing trend in the future as it's the fastest growing travel sector globally wellness health and wellness that's the name of uh, the game these days that's right and all this is in prep for the Malaysia visit Malaysia 2020 and simple googling will give you the following results uh, Malaysia was awarded destination of the year in 2016 by International Medical Travel Journal in 2015 and 2016 Malaysia also listed in one of the top five destinations for medical tourism um, in the Huffington Post that's right so you might ask well why is medical tourism especially here in Malaysia gaining so much popularity well mm -hmm. two things there's government support and it is affordable compared to many other surrounding or neighboring countries and what the MOH or the Ministry of Health has also done is that they have formed an interministerial uh, uh, association or, or, mm -hmm. or, or, or uh, a group to smooth coordination among various departments hospitals and committees so that uh, there is um, sort of you know everyone is on the same page and it can flow smoothly. That's right. Uh, you know, speaking about uh, wellness tourism, guess what? It is a Tuesday. We have Dr. Alice who will be joining us um, right. later on. And we do hope um, to have her weigh in on this topic as well. So stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back after the break. Don't go anywhere.
Perasaan nak mengucapkan selamat Hari Raya kepada semua rakyat Malaysia especially untuk penonton-penonton dari bernama News Channel Selamat Hari Raya Assalamualaikum. Hai, saya Eli Mazlin ataupun Kak Ina Pompom. Okey, Kak Ina ingin mengambil kesempatan ini untuk mengucapkan selamat Hari Raya Aidilfitri kepada semua tenaga kerja dan juga penonton bernama News Channel. Selamat Hari Raya. Ah, ayah kamu selalu pesan pakai tali pinggang kereta. Gunakan lampu isyarat kereta. Naik motor aja mesti ketatkan tali topi kereta. Okey, tak apa. Hai, so cermat cermat dia pun mati akibat kejuaian orang lain. Balik mana? Tumpang ah. Tinggal dia lah bang eh. Sebab tinggal ah. Dulu mak pimpin tangan man bila melintas. Sekarang man dah besar dah. Kena jaga diri. Oh. Balik saya ke? Nak tumpang? Ya, Pak Cik. Tak tak sabar jumpa Mak ni. Man, Man. Kan lebih ke Amat naik pengangkutan awam. Tak apa, Mak. Man tertidur tadi terlepas nak tumpang kawan. Balik macam mana? Balik. Ha, ingat pandu, tonggang dan jalan dengan selamat. Anda mampu mengubahnya. Hi there and welcome back to Banama Today. You are with Sonia, Aisha and Jesse Chahal with you on a Tuesday, 18th of June, 2019. We do have a very special guest with us today. She is Dr. Ellis, who is the wellness physician. And today's topic will be on autoimmune diseases. Welcome on the sh welcome to the show, Dr. Ellis. Hello, Sonia. Thank Hi. you. Thanks for coming back, Doctor. We're doing some color blocking here. We've got black and blue going on. And then you come in here and just steal the show <laughs> in <my> pink. <laughs> That's right. OK. So you keep telling me I'm in the pink of health. Yes, that's right. Yes, quite literally. I'm proving you right. Today. Yes, that's right. And you've always been right in terms of how we should uh, be taking care of our, our health and overall general wellness as well. And today we wanted to zoom in into uh, that uh, of uh, autoimmune diseases. But just before the break, doctor, we spoke about how Malaysia is thriving as a wellness tourism uh, industry. What do you think about that? I think we can do a lot more because uh, I think the number of doctors and facilities we have towards uh, developing uh, wellness uh, tourist destination is actually on the rise now, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. And most of us are uh, committed to getting it uh, even better in as much as educating ourselves, educating the general public, as well as also uh, building up more services That's that right. can help people to remain well. Mm -hmm. And there, yeah. there, there is a smooth flow between whether it's government hospital or private hospitals and just the entire system as well, right? Yes. There's, there's a better conduct there. So mm -hmm. today we wanted to focus on immune function disorders and what happens if that is That's low. Right. You know, I think we talk about the immune system. Uh, you know, sometimes it can tell the difference between foreign cells and your own cells. Uh, yeah. But in the case of this autoimmune disease, um, we all know that the immune system tends to mistakes um, parts of your body like your joints yeah. or skin as a foreign. So. When it comes to immune system disorders, of course, there can be the condition where your immune system is just on the decline. Mm -hmm. So it can be like once you've uh, had a bad flu or bad uh, infection or you underwent a major surgery, your whole system is down and together with it, your immune functions are down as well. So mm -hmm. then, uh, or in aging, as with aging, there mm -hmm. is a topic we call immunescence mm -hmm. and it is clinically proved that the neutrophil uh, way of responding to a pathogen or infection as a virus or a chemical that comes into the body yeah. the way of fighting is actually on the decline mm -hmm. so now people are living longer uh, for longer ages mm -hmm. uh, they are living longer basically because life-threatening diseases are on the down yeah. uh, but then there is still a lot of morbidity coming from people 
uh, having low immune function when they age. Okay. So infection kind of gets them, yeah. you yeah. know, or even certain cancers, which is also immune modulated. Yeah. It's due to immune function decline, certain cancers come. So all this can actually uh, affect the aging population yeah. too. Are so there I any think physical uh, factors, uh, sorry, symptoms uh, that is detectable that's caused by this uh, autoimmune disease. Uh, autoimmune disease, on the other hand, is yes. not just a simple decline of one's immunity. Okay. It's actually uh, your body cells. Uh, which is supposed to be killing only bacteria and pathogens, instead of declining, they actually overreact. Oh. So it kind of detects the person's brain, mm -hmm. the person's thyroid, the person's heart. So it goes you on know? attack mode. Yeah, and mm -hmm. skin. It continues to attack these areas, kidneys, mm -hmm. liver. So almost every part of the body can be affected by autoimmune disorders. So okay. who can get this disorder? Is it something that sort of, you know, you can get at any stage of your life? Or does it happen uh, sort of progressively? Or is it depending on genes or lifestyle? Uh, there is a definitely a genetic background to it. Uh, and there's also not always your parents need to have it or your grandparents because sometimes there are mutations to specific genes or changes in specific genes that can cause infections. But generally, the autoimmune disorders appear a little bit earlier. I see. Okay. Okay. So compared to aging people getting these autoimmune problems as well, but it tends to affect the younger population so, uh, a lot early? more. Uh, sometimes it can be in their 15, you know, uh, 12 to 15 mm -hmm. age. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be in uh, infant stage, like in uh, autism. Yeah. And how is it uh, being it's treated? It's a condition that yeah. affects because of the toxins and because of the uh, metal toxicities that affect the mother that pl passes through the blood to the child okay. and it affects yeah. the blood brain, you know, barrier, it crosses and That's starts right. eating up those tender you know brain cells of the infants mm -hmm. so autism is also one of the autoimmune conditions also mm -hmm. so it can be but of course as we grow older sometimes environmental factors also play a big part okay. so basically you may be overexposed to too much of chemicals you may be smoking mm. you may be taking a lot of alcohol which has you know which wax up your system even one single day of binging can have a major effect on your immune function if you smoke yes that's why we say butt it out you know mm -hmm. <laughs> remove it from your yeah. you know system so your immune function has a chance and what about food and, and um, our diet yeah uh, absolutely yeah. the more chemicals we take there's a lot and lot of uh, research now come out of uh, metal toxicities insecticides pesticides yeah hormones in you know skin care and creams we were talking Absolutely. about it last yeah. week mm -hmm. so all of this can actually affect of course hormonal conditions causing immune function disorders or vice versa it can be a chicken and egg story mm -hmm. yes. where you actually find that because the cells the immune cells are detecting say for example the thyroid gland as a, a pathogen it actually thinks the thyroid a gland is a pathogen so it starts to attack its own cells and okay. because of that then your thyroid uh, hormones are low and because this is low this will affect your estrogen progesterone your, or your and testosterone then effect. and then that will cause more autoimmune problems wow. in the body yeah. once your sex hormones are low that's why you find that during menopause or after menopause and I take care of a big population of people for andropause and menopause mm -hmm. and I find that people will suddenly develop skin rashes mm -hmm. patches on the skin of course we will still test them for allergies and all that but it is not as simple as that sometimes we need to think out of the box and look at many other things before we are able to detect what really initiated this and many yeah. times it is hormones mm -hmm. decline of estrogen progesterone testosterone uh, your uh, adrenal gland hormones so it affects uh, men as which well, is cortisol like yeah mm. and thyroid it definitely affects men but mm. female are a little bit more prone to, uh, prone to autoimmune disorders compared so to men how do we pick up symptoms at what point uh, is it just because I got a rash or I've got a little bit of a flu I mean how will I know that because is definitely exactly a harbinger of bad things yeah. but of course sometimes it's just hair loss I've seen some of my hair loss patients uh, when we did a blood test for collagen disorders we are able to pick up things so when I do a biopsy I'm able to pick up things and it's actually an autoimmune uh, specter of course things like eczema 
mm -hmm. things like psoriasis and uh, lupus erythematosus, which just starts as a butterfly rash uh, in yeah. the skin. It can go on to spreading to your kidney, your heart. It affects almost every organ, and they're also present with the arthritis. Joint problems, again, is one of the very common things that alert us to the fact that this person has got an autoimmune uh, okay. problem. Right. But joint problems are also quite common, especially yes. as you age and you think, well, yeah, it's common. Little do you know, you probably have onset autoimmune disease. Yeah. We oh. also uh, track people over the ages of 30 to 50 or 55, as long as they want to remain well. I'm doing uh, all the tests and yeah. biomarkers to see how they age. And I find that many of them who are working earlier on, they're rheumatoid arthritis factors started to rise around the time of menopause and with aging and mm -hmm. this is where we talk about immunosense where immunity is going down but there's also negative impact on the so yes like what you said it's very hard to diagnose whether it is just a pure aging osteoarthritis that's right or it is rheumatoid but rheumatoid normally full-fledged rheumatoid arthritis present slightly earlier but not does not mean older people do not get because mm -hmm. they can develop it later on in life yeah. but it normally presents as very severe debilitating pain swelling redness of the joints mm -hmm. and if it starts earlier in your life or even later it's don't it's don't ignore it don't think it is yeah. just wear and tear please book an appointment with yeah. a doctor who can actually check and identify the, whether you have autoimmune joint disease. That's right. And presenting your doctor. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is there a treatment for yeah. this? You know, I mean, it sounds very concerning, but is there ways that you can treat The it? general treatments that is available, of course, is a disease model treatment. Basically, mm -hmm. once we have found out and identified that someone has it, we start working on their immune, uh, you know, system, which is basically to quieten down the immune system mm -hmm. which is using steroids mm -hmm. uh, i'm not a major fan of steroids because i think it makes a person less well so i tend to kind of get my patients to start reducing the factors we talked about what causes it That's so it's right. a bit of lifestyle changes a bit of better nutrition there's a lot of plant-based uh, things that can help with immune functions like astrolagus is one you know you can go for a lot of different kind of berries they are tasty as well mm -hmm. you know strawberries blackberries you know kiwi what they have antioxidants or vitamins you know we do okay. vitamin drips yeah that's right what about eating uh with uh, or eating foods that are available locally. I've read somewhere before that wherever you are, the local food and nutrients is best for you given the weather, uh, landscape, climate, uh, and all sorts. So for us, we've got lots of tropical foods, beautiful yeah. local veggies from Ulam mm -hmm. to the Assam that we are now promoting via stems. So That's right. what about Antioxidants do increase yeah. immune function. So okay. we go for the best antioxidants that we can find in our market. It, yeah. And heat in color you know find different colored you know mm -hmm. uh, green peppers you know yellow peppers that's or, right, or, or red right. peppers and that's then right. some fruits and vegetables yeah, yeah. That's, right. that's right well thank you so much dr alice i think that's a very great insight on the autoimmune disease uh, we've learned so much from it we do have to take a quick break uh, when we come back we have the sangha bahasa segment and we'll be right back after the break see you shortly Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera kepada anak muda di luar sana. Hari raya bukan sahaja masa untuk kita berkongsikan duit raya. Tetapi lebih penting adalah masa untuk kita bersama dengan ibu bapa, abang kakak dan adik, rakan-rakan untuk meraihkan hari kita semua. 
Dan jangan lupa, jangan hanya kita apa fit atau kurangkan makanan semasa bulan Ramadan. Bila tiba ni Hari Raya Fitri, kurangkan makan benda bergula sangat. Ingat bersenam dan jangan sesekali lupa untuk sentiasa kekal fit. Saya, Menteri Berdia Desukan, Syed Sadiq ingin mengucapkan selamat Hari Raya Aidilfitri. Maaf, zahir dan batin. Bernama today, Sonia Aisha and Jesse Chahel taking you through 18th of June 2019. We've just uh, finished uh, Father's Day celebration. That's of right. course, Raya celebrations are still ongoing here in Bernama as well. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll be having many little, not open houses, but open floors, uh, <laughs> as we call it. So very exciting times uh, here. And talking about all of that, uh, you know, intercultural celebration as well. Uh, here today, we wanted to highlight uh, this keyword in our Sangar Bahasa mini segment brought to us by our friends at Dewan Bahasa and Pustaka. That's right. The word for the day is pay, paid review, which if you translate it into Bahasa, it means ulasan mubaya. I think a lot of uh, people can relate to this, you know, yeah. especially on social media. Uh, they're getting paid to, to do reviews for um, advertisement purposes. Yeah, mm -hmm. and endorsement, whether it's, you know, it's, it's a movie or it's a particular product. Everyone's got a few, uh, their two cents, and so they get paid for how they feel about the product. Hence, paid review and that word it's ulasan berbaya so you might see this word here and there whether in newspapers mm -hmm. online that's and right you, before you start wondering well you heard it here first <laughs> we, we forgot to explain the meaning of it actually uh, it means a person giving the evaluation has been paid to do so some people question this practice wondering if people who write paid reviews are able to remain impartial mm. so that's a very interesting fact. that's interesting just like mm -hmm. movie critiques and, yes. and people who you know share their views on some it's always biased maybe like like just some news media publications as well, That's right? right? Funny, it goes on and on. Okay. Well, from that, we move on back into the news and bringing you headlines. Uh, back to Tun Mahathir's trip to the UK. He wraps it up uh, with a hospital visit to visit uh, and see little baby Ainul Mardia. And uh, I think all of us will remember Ainul. That's right. I think uh, Tun Dr. Made uh, is on a three-day visit in the United Kingdom. Uh, as we mentioned yesterday, he was at the High Commission of Malaysia. Um, but for those of you uh, who are not really familiar with I know she is um, an infant who was diagnosed with a uh, mouth cancer and she can now breathe on her own Alhamdulillah after uh, the successful surgery uh, that was being conducted in the UK uh, if you can check out uh, see the video it is a heartwarming story of how we can come together as Malaysians and as she underwent a successful operation at a hospital in London last May that's right so here is soon I'm taking some time out to uh, visit uh, the little girl amongst the medical uh, doctors and personnel there and of course with a uh, family of uh, baby I know not an easy uh, experience to go through of course not for the baby but for the parents as well to That's see your right. infant uh, like that but uh, things are looking up and we hope uh, that it just gets better from here on That's uh, right. moving into some technology news mm -hmm. and you know even if your math is bad I'm sure a lot of you <laughs> can figure out what this means um, Huawei smartphone sales plunge 40% worldwide that is, is horrid for any business now Huawei's founders said the Chinese telecom giants overseas smartphone sales have tumbled since the US last month had threatened to blacklist the company and he warned that the embattled firm would slash production to weather the US drive to isolate this issue. That's right, Huawei, who was the world's number two smartphone producer last year, ahead of Apple and behind South Korea, Samsung, as well as the largest provider of telecom networking equipment. Um, in interesting figures here, uh, Huawei has shipped a total of 206 million smartphones in 2018, about half uh, in China and half in uh, overseas. Huawei has emerged as a key bone of contention in the wider China-US trade war yeah. that has seen tit-for-tat tariffs imposed on hundreds of billions of dollars worth of goods. That's right, the rise and fall, right? And so while US and China are at their trade war, the rest of the world is also being affected. But nonetheless, for Huawei, who's taken, I mean, they are all sort of a late entry into this space where right. smartphones are concerned. Uh, they have been on the rise since uh, the late, uh, you know, 2008, 2009. They were 
they were becoming quite popular. Yeah. But then are suddenly you, you had that surge. Uh, phone no, user I'm not. Okay. I, I, I'm kind of old oh. school that way. I stick <laughs> I mean, to I've safe always, brands. I've always been an iPhone user, um, but I've come across people who use Huawei, and the camera is just amazing. amazing. Absolutely, yes. And I think it's time we also start to embrace, you know, different brands and whether it's a different technology. That's uh, right. Yes, Huawei has had many uh, paid and non-paid uh, reviews, but mm -hmm. it has had many good reviews as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Huawei has also acknowledged the existence of their very own operating system. That's so right. So that, of course, makes it a little bit more challenging for people who are used to the typical Android system. Uh, but uh, this platform remains shrouded in mystery, so we have not been able to have a look at it. So for those of you who have Huawei phones, who want to upgrade or That's are looking right. for to get uh, Huawei phones, there's just plenty of waiting time. That's right. Um, also, we have another sad news that's happening in the U.S. Uh, Gloria Vanderbilt, <coughs> who is the jeans queen, uh, dies at 95 years old. That's right. Uh, she, of course, is the great, great granddaughter <coughs> of financier Cornelius Vanderbilt and the mother of CNN newsman or uh, news anchor Anderson Cooper, who we all know she passed on on Monday at the mm -hmm. age of 95. Yes, yeah, so that's right. Um, she was known as uh, having an extraordinary life as the poor little rich girl of the Great Depression survived family tra 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 tragedies mm -hmm. and multiple marriages and during the 70s and 80s as a designer jeans pioneer. Uh, her life was chronicled in sensational headlines from her from her childhood through four marriages and three divorces. That's right. Um, I'm actually surprised. I had no idea she was Anderson Cooper's mother. That's right. She had been suffering from advanced stomach cancer, and uh, of course, her husbands have included uh, many well-known uh, people: Leopold uh, Stokowski, the celebrated conductor; Sidney Lumet, the award-winning movie and television director. And back in '98, she witnessed the suicide of one of her four sons. So. Her Hard life, nonetheless. Poor little rich girl. Well, it's not always, you know, roses as well. That's right. Yeah. But I think living up to 95 years old, I think that's also very, um, you know, a good news for all of us. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yep. And um, speaking of which, we have the Russia tortoise smuggling. Oh, this is very sad. Uh, Russia foil attempts to smuggle 4,100 tortoises. Um, oh, tortoise. This news, all like this, gets me all the time. How do people even? Put these little it. animals who can't speak for themselves or defend themselves through mm -hmm. this. Russian customs officers in Orenburg have foiled an attempt to smuggle 4,100 rare tortoises across the border from Kazakhstan into Russia. I guess we've got to look at the positive that now these little babies will be free. Uh, right. This is a video released by the Russian Federal Customs Service. These tortoises were put into sacks and hidden <laughs> with several tons of cabbages. Oh no, that's really sad. You know, I, these are actually one of my favorite animals because mm. I've swim with one of them okay. um, but I don't know about this sort of torti uh, turtles uh, especially when they grow older um, but the size can really expand and, you know as you can see um, you know I think they live up to 150 years old right. and even older sometimes that's right so. but these guys um, are they mostly on on land or they do they do a bit of both huh? the, the, are these the ones we get in the in our coastal um, I don't think beaches. so. I think those are the ones. I mean, you'll see it on in the zoo. Yeah. But I think they mostly live on land. On land, that's right. Um, all right, and that's all the, the news that we have for today. We will take a short break. But um, coming up, yes. very very <laughs> exciting. Have you <laughs> ever had um, success with the Rubik cube? I know I've never been Me able too. I've to. I've attempted many times. Yeah, and then I just gave it. up and I said, maybe I'm just not that smart. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we have a really intelligent boy here uh, joining us shortly. He's of course a uh, the Scoop Cube ASEAN number one record holder. Beat that. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Don't go anywhere. Stay tuned. Nine Eleven menampilkan pelbagai segmen menarik khas buat anda. Saksikan 9-11 setiap Isnin hingga Jumaat, 9 pagi, hanya di Bernama News Channel.
tontonlah pada setiap Khamis pukul 8.30 minit malam 1001 destinasi musim ke-6 di Bernama News Channel. Semuanya tentang anda. Ha, hello abang. Aina dah naik bas ni. Um, sekejap lagi anda sampai. Okay, Assalamualaikum. Jom klik. Sorry lambat. Jom klik. Abang, tak guna kerusi khas bayi ke? Alah, nak pergi pasar belakang ni je kan. Bukannya jauh pun. Tak ingat ke apa yang jadi ke ayah dulu? Saya Thomas, anak lelaki yang okey sini. Saya daripada Kajam. Pekerjaan saya lama. Sebelum ini, saya cari pelanggan, saya fotokopi pamplet. Lebih kurang 1,000, 2,000 pamplet saya hantar rumah ke rumah. So boleh dapat customer satu bulan, satu customer, dua customer saja. Saya pernah berputus asa dalam bidang ini sebab kerja banyak kurang. Saya register ke Servisio. Lepas itu, Servisio memperkenalkan e-rezeki. So lepas itu saya dapat banyak customer, income pun banyak. Assalamualaikum. Hai, saya Eli Mazlin ataupun Kak Ina Pumpum. Okey, Kak Ina ingin mengambil kesempatan ini untuk mengucapkan selamat Hari Raya Aidilfitri kepada semua tenaga kerja dan juga penonton bernama News Channel. Selamat Hari Raya. Thanks for joining us right here on Burnama Today. Sonia Aisha, Jesse Chahal taking you through our interview segment today. And in the studio, we have a Rubik Cube Prince. He's a Rubik Cube royalty as far as I'm concerned. That's right. And also this Cube Cube ASEAN number one record holder, Yi Wen Fu. Welcome to the studio. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it's okay. great to have you. Congratulations on your uh, record and your you know title holder yeah, uh, position. Thanks. And uh, yeah, we have here a couple of Rubik Cubes exactly. as well. Sonia, have you yeah. ever been in a Rubik Cube? I've not. Person? I've attempted a few times, yeah. but I was full in it. Yeah. But I've never seen anything like this before. This is very, it must be very, very advanced. I know, <laughs> of course, it's complicated because this is uh, this is the general Rubik Cube, right? Yeah. So yes. you, it's Wow, it's so smooth. You probably do it so yeah, much. Oh, yeah. So we're told I'm, to mess it up for I'm you. I'm going to mess it yeah, up okay. and then you're going to have to this solve it This is the part I'm good at. I've mastered <laughs> this. I'm record holder for this. But oh. to put it together, I've never had success, not even once. It's not that hard to learn, actually. Yeah, that's that's okay. the thing, isn't it? Are there different names for these? I mean, what do you call these rubies? This one is just a 2x2 two two, and this one is actually called a square one. I can actually have different shape with this and like. Okay. okay, so what is it about the Rubik Cube that you enjoy so much? Oh. What intrigues you about it? Uh, it's probably like I, I can go to participate in offshore competitions, uh -huh. which I make a lot of friends, and it just had a lot of fun, a ton of fun. So you okay. started way back at the age of 13 when a few friends yeah. uh, uh, decided yeah, to yeah, yeah. to get doing this. That's right. And 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 then what happened? And then I just like, wow, that was so cool. I just want to learn it. And after like in July, I learned it, and I'd be like. Wow, I can solve it now. Let's let's just try to get my time yeah. a lot lower. Yeah. Okay. And how do you learn it? Was it from the YouTube uh, tutorial? Uh, it's oh. it's from my friend. But after that, I, I learned the advanced method from YouTube. Wow, from just from YouTube. Yeah, just from YouTube. And now your ASEAN's number one. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And in what time frame was that? What was that competition like? How many did you have to solve? Uh, no, it's for WCA. We only have. Like for one event, we only have five attempts, okay. and we take out the fastest attempts and the slowest one. Okay. And the middle, you the get three, the yeah. I see. Okay. And how do you practice? You know, uh, is there a lot of hours that you're required to put into to yeah, master yeah, yeah. one a of these? Yeah, a lot of hours. Wow. And you just slip with it, and yeah. before you head to bed, a lot of people will feel like, 
wow, you guys won't get bored just by practicing it. But I'm not really boring. Okay, as with a lot of things, when we want, when we want to go pro, just like when we're playing sports, we go buy the most expensive racket or we go buy the you know branded uh, gear yes, exactly. so we can look cool <laughs> yeah. doing it. But we fail to realize that it's really the art that is more important. So your first Rubik cube was from Pasamalang. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, from it's the just night a market. Pure ringgit, yeah. That's really interesting. So you played with it every day, and your interest became, of course, uh, more intense with it. And then you came across. WCA, who told you about the World uh, Cubic Association or the World Cube Association? I thought of myself because I like going through some videos of this, this Rubik's Cube and I just found out like, wow, WCA, then I can participate in the competitions. Okay. And I go for my first competition, which is the Funi Open 2017. I see. And does your school encourage this sort of participation? Um, not really. Okay, so, so yeah, it's good. I mean, time to create awareness. Out of yeah, that's right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. When uh, you have special interests, uh, you know, explore that and take that on to the next level. So all mm. the years you've participated in nine international competitions. Currently, the first in Southeast Asia and Malaysia, tenth place in Asia uh, in Asia overall, and 39th place in the world wow, wow. Good so I've tried my best to mess this up don't ask okay. me to solve oh, yeah. it because I oh, can't are you gonna to attempt <laughs> to do it this one um, looks pretty simple Sonia. okay yeah. okay, okay so maybe you can try and tell okay. us about is this the timer oh you this have is here. actually a timer oh you, you see you can see the timer, timer on the screen as well yeah could you tell us a little bit about the vi this video that's being played right oh now? yeah it's been played this is my uh, natural record videos and uh -huh. this is for the stem cube open and this one right here is the USM Penang cube 2019 okay. Wow, that is uh, yeah. really fast. Yeah. Okay, so um, and let's I can see. Can you see the excitement once? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 he just yeah, like yeah. slams it onto the table. <laughs> <laughs> this one right here is actually the Trust Cubing Challenge. Okay. Do you have? Oh, sorry. Do you have your own YouTube channel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People yeah. and do you have a lot of subscribers? No, just watching? 89 subs. Oh no, but I all think right, Malaysia. So potential. <laughs> time to up your Rubik Cube game and uh, right. go and like your channel. What's what's your channel called? Uh, just my name, Yi Wenfu. Okay, Yi Wenfu. Uh, he's of course currently ranked first in Southeast Asia and Malaysia. Definitely a champion. Let's start your timer and let's see uh, how long it takes. Should we do the basic one first and then oh, we can sure. up it? Oh, sure. <laughs> right, so yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> challenge you with uh, two by two first. Okay, okay, here so. we go. Okay. Can we talk to you while we do it? Or is yeah, that because I'm just going to oh, finish. Oh my gosh! I haven't even finished the what? sentence yet. <laughs> what was that? Three uh, seconds? Three point four six seconds. Wow! Wow! <laughs> what? Okay. Okay. So this is three seconds. What about yeah. this? Okay. One? Let's, let's try one. I'm just going to jump around, around ten. Little All little right. Bit. Let's get the camera in frame. Okay. Uh, get the positions. Oh, and there you go. Okay. So, and yes, uh, some time for inspection. <laughs> inspection. Yeah. Okay. okay. Like you should test him in blindfolding his eyes all during it. <laughs> oh dear. I need to find out. And they, they are formulas and algorithms that you can apply oh, yeah. to it. This one's pretty slow because I'm really nervous. Okay, a bit okay. nervous. And yeah. pretty slow means 15 seconds? Yeah. Okay, so that's pretty slow. What's the fastest time? On, I mean, your average time oh, otherwise. My average time is like 9, 10 seconds. Right. Okay, so tell me, what is the secret behind it in terms of what is the art, what is the algorithm, what's the formula? Because initially you had inspected it first, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, are you trying to remember what is where? I uh, know. It's actually like we learn method, like we got a lot of methods to solve a cube. We got rule, ZZ, and C4. What I'm using is C4. Which means when I started to solve this guy, inspect for the cross first because that's the first step for a simple. Where's the cross? What cross are you looking for? Uh, what's cross? This this is a cross. Okay. Right cross. Okay. okay. All right, right, right. Okay. And then we will pair up the pieces and form the second layer, like this one here. This is oh, the second layer. Okay. After that, we will do some out to finish the third layer. And there we go, the cube is wow. solved. I always fear because the moment you, you, you feel like you're almost there, you've solved a couple like for two lines and then you're, yeah. you have to jumble it up again to make sure it's all right. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. very complicated. That's <laughs> true. I pretty much get stuck there too. Yeah. The once I tried it, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so you take this Rubik cube everywhere you go. Yeah, pretty much. And what do you think you're going to make out of this? Are you going to make this? Do you it's want to become career. world champion? Or do you want to you teach other kids or adults to learn this? Yeah, I do teach a lot of people and I think about going for world champ too wow. because I'm going to world championship this year. Where is the world championship? Uh, Australia, okay. Melbourne. And when yeah. is that? Um, this July. Oh, so okay. how, how are you training? Because you're really so good. Yeah. What else are you going to do? Uh, probably I like, learned some 
out there more advanced to just, to just improve my time. Okay. So there are very uh, various algorithms to it. Is there one which is like, okay, this if you use this one, this is the fastest way to get there, or it's just a mix? Uh, it depends of, on your yeah. skill. On your skill. Oh yeah. yeah, we got like for three by three, the last layer we got something called the PLL. Okay. And PLL have total of twenty one algorithms for like this one. 21. This one is just like. Something like this, and we got some one other ones like this okay. one. In this case, so do you test out which algorithms tend to work best? I mean, there's yeah, 21. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, right. so it, it does get a little bit sort of you know sci scientific as well. Um, do you have to be good in maths? No, not at all. Okay, so okay. that's a that's a misconception. You yes. don't have to be yeah. good in maths. <laughs> um, and what do you how how does it really work? I mean, what wh how how does it work? Oh, we yeah. got a uh, <laughs> simple uh, question. I know, just like, I'm just, I know we're still trying to digest. Yeah. Yeah. So we got total of 40 quintillion notation for this one. Again? Okay. 43 quintillion. What quintillion. is quintillion? Quintillion is like so many zeros behind it. Oh, wow. that's right. So it's like yeah. a billion, a hundred billion, and a trillion just above, way above yeah, the power. Yeah, above. Next to infinity. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, and how has this uh, changed your life? You know, I know, I'm sure, um, you know, ever since you won the world champ, I mean, sorry, the ASEAN championship, um, so, it has changed your life in some sort. Okay, story. so before I started cubing, I'm just like tend to play games and I kind of like s like to stay at home and not socialize with other people. Mm -hmm. But after I learned this one, I just go to competition, learn a lot of friends, and I started to become just like to socialize with other people. Yeah, more an extra yeah. And how are they so at the competition? I mean, do you guys share um, new discoveries on the algorithms, or kind of like everyone's just sticking to themselves? No, no, we don't do that. We don't do that. Okay. We just like going to others and say, "Hi, so what's what what, what how do you do it for today?" Wow, and, and I like when as we are talking here. <laughs> Yeah, do you, do you, can you do it without looking? Yeah, but it's going to take like a few minutes. Okay. So how can you do it without looking? Yeah, how do you do it? You know, you got to see the colors, right? I mean, yeah. or is there like different senses for each colors? Okay, so for blind folded map, though, we got like, every piece has got its own uh, alphabet. So we just need to memorize the alphabet and where they go. Okay. So it's quite easy. I see. I was just going to say that's quite hard because it's a memorizing <laughs> game, but then you said yeah. quite easy. Yeah. Okay, um, what should people know about this? Because I think the misconception is, oh, you know, you've got this gadget, the boy is just playing it, he's not interacting, mm -hmm. but here's the difference. Rather than playing video games exactly. uh, excessively, of course, a little bit is good, and mm -hmm. there are good games out there. It's good to have technology around us as well. Yeah. But uh, this really, uh, you know, it's a little bit sort of old school, if I could use the word. It's the original um, yeah, yeah. Um, creative mm -hmm. uh, game. Yeah. Right. And so, what we like to say to parents or to to kids out there who have taken an interest in this and they want to pursue doing this? Oh, it's actually don't 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 afraid to go into competitions because all the people there are just so polite and we are not toxic. We are not toxic social. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So parents don't stop them from playing because it's actually a very good sport. Yeah. And yeah, just let them play and let them be. Okay, so here's the biggest challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I was told to, you know, because you could solve that, and I'm just gonna. Do you want to try jumbling this? Okay, one I'm yeah. good at jumbling yeah. part. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but meanwhile, true. I just wanted to ask you because I don't have to look at it as well. <laughs> I, jump, I can just look at you. Um, what were your parents? Uh, how how supportive were they, and what did they say when you mm. when they said, well, you know, mom, dad, I wanna I wanna go to competitions. Is oh. it very expensive as well? Uh, competition is not that expensive, but just see how far you go. Like. If you go very far, you're just your, your uh, transportation fees mm. uh, will be expensive. Who's the championship uh, for the Rubik's Cube right now? Rubik's Cube is Flixandex or Max Partly. Both are very competitive. Nice. We're coming for you, wherever you are. Okay. We're going to get you. <laughs> I'm all for And how old is the person, uh, the number one ch world champion? Uh, probably like Max Partly is 19 or something. And uh, Flixandex is 21, 22. I see. What are your thoughts about having a, 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 a game? Sort game. of a software for this rather than. Oh yeah, we got software, um, but it's just timer. All we got like a virtual Rubik's cube in okay. the phone. Yeah. Okay, I think I'm done. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. Done. <laughs> <laughs> just talking. Yeah. Carried away. All right. Okay. So what? Uh, what uh, formula or method are you applying now? And you're not even looking at it. Yes. No, I'm not solving yet. I'm just scrambling. Oh, you're okay. scrambling yeah, it. Okay. Yeah. It's gonna take a long time to solve. I'm not gonna solve it. Oh, oh, that's fine. Okay. We'll just we just wanted to, you know. Make it more it difficult bit. for you, but <laughs> hey, you're doing so do well. Maybe you congrats. could just maybe do two or three colors for this. Yeah, I think so. Okay. And so where can you? Sorry. Yeah, I'm no, just curious, Where can you purchase this? I've never seen. You know, I see this at Toys R Us because my yeah, Toys R Us are Rubik's okay. brand, but recently I never uh, like ever mentioned that they are good, but they are just like um, 
the starter of Rubik's Cube. Okay. He's just the inventor of Rubik's Cube. Mm. How much time do you need to spend uh, every day? Because you're in Form 4, uh, it is you know, a, a, a difficult year as well as you prepare for the big uh, SPM next year. So a lot of things going on with your, with your you know, educational life as well. So how do you uh, make time for this and how much time do you need to put into this? Um, I just like, I only play at night because before sleep, that, that would be probably a really good time to practice because you don't waste too much time. Yeah. And I don't actually need much sleep because I'm not a like, a uh, person that I easily get tired, so it's not a problem for me. And are you sorry? sorry. Are you the first in the family that's been doing this, or do you have a, uh, you know older cousins or siblings who do yeah. this? And are you going to encourage the younger ones to pick up the same hobby? Yeah. Yeah, I'm the first one in my family to actually do this, and I want to like. I motivate my little sister, but she didn't want to let she just want to play. Yeah. Right. I'm actually intrigued Not by yet. this. I have a feeling I might pick this one up as well, because can you imagine when you're stuck in traffic and you know the mobile phone is so distracting, but this is kind of like as you're driving, you yeah. can you know, pick this up. Yeah. Okay, that's it. We're going to learn the Ruby Cube. Exactly. Uh, when for you going to teach us how to do it? <laughs> um, forget that one. I just I yeah. just made a mess okay. out of it. Okay. So okay. for a newbie like me and for someone with a little bit more experience like Sonia, mm -hmm. How do we solve this? What's the first step? Okay, so the first step is you just do a face. Something like this. Okay. Yeah. Don't matter the how, color beside it. But how do I okay. get to the face? Uh, you need to figure this out yourself. Oh because, dear. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. I think we have so much to learn. Uh, you know, great insight as well. Um, please, you know, do you think you would form a community on the Rubik's Cube? Is that something that's coming along the way? That would be great, then you can definitely join yeah. have, uh, and like, become a member. We already have a like, really big community. Like We got so many groups in face Facebook. Okay. And also, we just like co always communicating with Cubers from all around the country. That's all around the world. great. So, okay. listen up, folks. Uh, they are on Facebook. Uh, there is a community that you can join. Uh, fortunate, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have oh, today. That's and, right. I was um, really enjoying this uh, interview. Right. Thank you for coming in, Wenfu. All the okay, very best you, at yes. the World Championship. And I hope that. Uh, you do you know as as the best you can and come back with even better achievements okay, thank that's you right much. thank you so much for being on the show and thank you to all the viewers out there for sticking through with us we'll come back tomorrow on another edition of Bernama today so stay tuned see you next time bye 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 Anda ingin menjadi kaya, tetapi awas. Terdapat banyak skim-skim pelaburan tidak sah di pasaran. Jika ragu-ragu, anda boleh jumpa kami untuk memahami formula TIPU. Apa itu TIPU? T. Tidak akan rugi. I. Indah kabar dari rupa. P. Peluang hanya sekali. U. Untung besar. Ingat dan berwaspada.